The enemy is using them to hack into your mind so that you defeat yourself. That is the only way the enemy can defeat you is if they can influence you to defeat yourself. Nobody sins for you. Nobody causes you to lose faith. These things are under your control. You have to worry about you and your relationship with God because God is going to cover you. When you're in right standing with God, when your life is right and you're living a righteous and holy lifestyle, the favor that he gives you acts as a shield. The only way they're gonna be able to penetrate your shield is if they hack you from the inside and make you think that you're not protected. That is the only way, is when you lose that faith in what God says is real. The lies, the falsehoods, the fabrications, all of those things that the narcissist says is literally a figment of your imagination. And when you allow it to take root in your mind, those roots start to get deeply entrenched into your belief systems, starts to become anxiety over the future, rumination from the past, you know, those wounds start to reopen. The only way these lies that the narcissist is afflicting you with will ever become manifest is if you take them seriously. You have to stop taking them seriously. How do you instantly break the power of these dark forces? You make manifest what is greater. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. It cannot overcome it. When the narcissist tries to volley curses at you, you declare what's greater. You attach your mind to what is greater. And what is always going to be infinitely greater is the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The protection that you have is so much greater than anything that they could ever do to you. The only way that they become a threat is if you start to believe that they can actually harm you. We walk by faith and not by sight. Things may look a certain way in your life. You may feel like you're being cornered and the narcissist is zeroing in on you. But if you speak the word of God and you declare it over your situation, you release your faith, allow the supernatural words to be manifest in your life. You have to absorb it into your heart, into your soul, into your mind, into your body. The Holy Spirit will quicken your mortal body. The more that you read the word of God, the more that your physical mortal body actually quickens to life. But a merry heart is like good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The narcissist wants to crush you with all these threats. The only way that it can have an effect and start to dry you up spiritually starts to get you living in that fear. The only way that they can accomplish that is if you believe it. Fear is false evidence appearing real, the opposite of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's how you tap into the supernatural power of God. Fear is how you tap into the supernatural power of the devil. The only way that they can operate in your life is if you take their threats, their accusations, their bullying, their shamelessness, their selfishness. Only if you allow that to affect you, will it ever affect you. A lot of the things that we are living in fear about that they might do never actually happens. It never actually happens. You insert your energy, your focus, and your attention into the word of God. You don't have any energy and focus and attention for what the narcissist is doing. If you have a paradigm shift and every time that you start to think about them and you start to let them infect you, you shift your focus back to God and, and he will disintegrate all of that re residue, all of those residual effects that they give you, all that negativity, all them scars that you have. God will pick up all the pieces and put you back the together. Stop believing that the narcissist has any sort of power, any sort of control over you. The second that you buy into that is the second that it becomes true and it's the only way that it could be true. You have to come into agreement with the victory that you already have in Jesus Christ. God came to dismantle the workings of darkness. He put the narcissist and every demonic force to shame on the cross, made a public spectacle of Satan. Sin died with Christ's flesh on the cross. Your death sentence was nailed to that and it died with his flesh. And when Jesus rose again, he conquered the grave, he conquered death, he conquered the narcissist. The only power they have is the power that you give them. When you start associating yourself with that old person that you used to be, that old sinful nature that you used to have, that actually died already, but you're dragging around that old dead body around. You're dragging around the weight and the burden of the person that you were when you were with the narcissist. But God says, behold, the old has passed away, the new has come, you are a new creation. And you've learned so much. And God wants to 
unlock talents and abilities. He wants to elevate you in so many ways, but you got to get over this fear. We are sons of God. And when you let that revelation sink in, the narcissist and what they do becomes minuscule. Like it's not even close. It's not even a fair fight. There's no way that they could ever overpower you. They just want you to think that they can so that you relinquish your power to them. That's the only way that they beat you is if you literally give away your power to them. And in order for them to get you to do that, they have to trick you. But if you know who you are, if you know your identity and the power that you carry, and you're convinced of that, and you know that you know that you know that you are a child of the Most High God, the devil does flee from you. When he keeps trying and trying and trying, and he realizes that he can't get in anymore, he's not going to continue to waste his time with you. He really is going to flee. Do not tolerate that wicked queen Jezebel. We have to start standing up to the narcissist, whatever way that looks like. Because if you tolerate Jezebel, the deeper their roots grow into whatever environment they're trying to infiltrate, whatever person's life they're trying to infiltrate, and the one that you put up with them, the more those roots, those tentacles are going to become deeply entrenched, deeply rooted into whatever they're trying to hijack, whatever they're trying to infect. You want to be a peacekeeper instead of a peacemaker, Jezebel is always going to have control over you. You have to stand up to these narcissists sometimes. God will show you when the time is right and he will give you the words to say. Sometimes you have to let him know. Sometimes you gotta let the devil know what's up and a lot of times they will retaliate. But the Bible says, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. If you're standing up for righteousness, if you're putting Jezebel in their place and you have a whole heart, you are literally standing up for righteousness. You're protected. All the retaliation that they're gonna do is minuscule. It's just gonna be lying about you to other people. Now make no mistake, they will go to great lengths to do destructive things. So let's not underestimate that. But if you're in God's will and you're standing up for what's righteous and he gives you the okay, he gives you the power, he gives you a righteous yearning to confront the narcissist in whatever situation, big or small, he's gonna back you up. What God blesses, no man can curse. If you're living righteous and you're in right standing with God, and you're standing up for what's right, yeah, you may get persecuted, but in the end, he will always exalt you over them. The narcissist fears being confronted. I know in some videos I say, let them expose themselves. It's all contingent on what the spirit of God is telling you, but make no mistake, you cannot continue to allow the narcissist to walk all over you just to be a peacekeeper. Sometimes you have to be a peacemaker. Sometimes that quantifies as approaching them with a little bit of fire, a little bit of righteous aggression, maybe a little abrasiveness. It all depends on what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. But if you feel like God is, is leading you to confront Jezebel, to confront the narcissist, you better do it because he's opening the door for you to do that. And he's going to have your back. There may not be many opportunities like that because a lot of times you're going to want to be strategic to try to avoid any confrontations. But the Bible does say, do not tolerate Jezebel. That means you have to confront Jezebel every once in a while. And only when you confront them, when you stand up for yourself, will a lot of these narcissistic generational curses actually be broken. Will that alter over your life with all of the familiar spirits that you feel like have just been encompassing you your whole entire life, have been circling around you, and you just feel like everybody around you is the same toxic, negative, manipulative type of person. Stand up and break them curses. Be bold in the spirit realm. Confront Jezebel. Tear down demonic altars. There's a book called Dangerous Prayers, Entering into the Courtroom of Heaven. In order for you to be able to break these curses, to break these cycles, these same uh, strategies over your life, in order to break those off, sometimes you got to enter into the courtroom of heaven and acknowledge that the accusations that the adversary has against you are legitimate. Because he accuses us, Satan accuses us to God. He's always at the courtrooms of heaven making accusations against us. That's what the Bible says. And he's not doing that for no reason. He's not just up there making stuff up. He's accusing you of the sin that, that you actually have, have done. All the iniquity that's running through your bloodline and your family tree. He's up there accusing. And sin gives him legal right to do that. It gives him legal right. So the Bible says make peace with the adversary on the way to court because you need to come into agreement that what the adversary is bringing to the court is actually true. Accept that, declare that, admit that, 
It's true, I have sinned. Jesus is your lawyer. He paid the bail. His blood covers the wager. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus died. Atone for all of that because life is in the blood. In order for something to live, something has to die first. So Jesus shed his blood for all of mankind in order for us to live. He died so that we could live. And his blood covers you. But you got to come into agreement that you sinned. Sometimes you got to enter into the courtroom of heaven like an actual court proceeding. You got to literally go to court in the spirit. And you got to break these demonic strongmen, these altars, these strongholds over your life. Because they need to be confronted. They need to be called out directly. Not some vague, ambiguous, oh, I call this out. I renounce this, 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 this. No, there's a way to really pinpoint one specific thing that's been plaguing you your whole life. And a lot of us need to do this in order to break this narcissistic curse off of our lives. Because I don't know about you, but me personally, <laughs> they're everywhere. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people that weren't born into these generational curses, they don't have to deal with this stuff. They have normal family that have normal functioning minds and care about them to some extent, have the capacity to experience, you know, basic human emotions and stuff. A lot of people, they don't have to deal with this. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing the same types of people everywhere. But I'm going to war in the spirit, and I hope that you'll join me. I've been entering the courtroom of heaven and tearing down altars based off of the guidance of this book. See, we're supposed to know these things because they're in the Bible. There is a courtroom of heaven that we can literally have a court proceeding in to be sentenced for the iniquity that we've done. But like I said, Jesus is right there. He pays it for us. It's like, oh, you're guilty. You're guilty every time. But it doesn't matter because Jesus covers you. He's right there. He's like an infinite uh, bail bondsman. He always pays the fine. He already paid all the fines. So all you have to do is go to court in order for the payment to process. Literally, that's all you have to do is show up <laughs> and you're good. You're free. You're not going to jail. You're forgiven, free, every time. You just have to show up to the court date. I hope you guys will take this into consideration. Obviously, there's other ways to bring down strongholds, prophetic insights, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. We just have to learn how to flow. And the thing about the narcissist is, you know, they're fully influenced by a Jezebel spirit. And in the Bible, a Jezebel spirit hates the prophetic. That's why she was going so hard for Elijah. She hates prophets. She hates the prophetic because where there is no prophetic flow, there is no revelation. There is no downloads. There is no insight. Jezebel is always trying to interrupt the prophetic so that you won't understand these things, how to tear down these demonic altars, on how to excommunicate Jezebel from your life completely, how to break this narcissistic curse to the point where all your enemies will be at peace with you. And there ain't going to be no more narcissists around you because you're going to have such a strong support system around you. You're going to be surrounded by people that are like you. You're going to have such a strong community around you. And a lot of us have even given up on that, haven't even envisioned that, haven't even thought it could be a possibility. But that's what God wants for you. The narcissist, this curse, is just fragmenting all of the inheritance that you're supposed to have. Those days are over. Those days are over. The veil is thinning between the light and the darkness, a lot of people that are in between are getting weeded out and they're having to choose a side of the fence. The divide is becoming greater and greater. The more that God divides it, the more he's gonna elevate you, he's gonna push you up. You're either gonna get pushed up or you're gonna get pushed down. If you're in the middle, if you're lukewarm and you're in this gray area, you're either gonna make a change and be pushed up or if you're on this end of the spectrum, you're gonna get pushed down. And when he starts finalizing your position in these last days, when he starts uh, solidifying a lot of these things, that's when you're gonna be blessed because you've endured. That's when these curses are gonna be broken. But you have to continue to fight. You have to go to war in the spirit every single day. This isn't just like a once a month type thing. This isn't a once a week type thing. If you really wanna be free from the narcissist, you gotta go to war in the spirit every single day. You gotta pray, you gotta fast, you gotta do all these things that you already know how to do. How badly do you wanna be free? How much do you wanna give up to be free? How much of your time do you want to give up to be free, to actually taste that freedom, that peace of mind, that support system around you that loves you? Because a lot of us just think that we're not supposed to have the best of everything. That's what we think. Is that really what you think God thinks about you? That's a lie. God wants you to have the best relationship. He wants you to have the best community, the best support system. He wants you to make a happy family. He wants you to be at peace, but you're gonna have to give up everything. Once you give up everything, 
you're gonna gain everything. Are you willing to lay down your life to break the curse of the narcissist? That fire of the Holy Spirit, that anointing breaks all yokes. Hunger and thirst for God. You keep that fire kindled. Keep staying broken every day, picking up that cross and following him every day. Subduing your flesh, silencing your flesh, being like, flesh, shut up. I mean, you can only go through the same things for so long until you either give up or it ignites something ridiculous in you and you can't be stopped. I don't know about you guys, but that's that's where I'm at. Nothing's gonna stop me from breaking these curses. Nothing's gonna stop me from pursuing that holy fire that breaks every single yoke. I don't know about you, but I yearn for every single chain off my life to be broken. I yearn for that freedom. I yearn for that. And I'm gonna get it. You guys are gonna get it too. If you believe that what God says is for you, is for you, then you will get it. But if you don't think that his word is talking about you, even though it says it does, then you won't get it. You'll stay in bondage to the narcissist and you'll just be cursed your whole life. God doesn't want that for anybody, but you will break free. You're in the process of breaking free right now. God is giving you more revelation. Even through this video, you're receiving revelation. You can't take any days off. You gotta go hard in the spirit until that thing breaks, until that release happens, until that breakthrough happens, until those rivers of living water just start flowing on the inside of you, until that fire sets you free. Keep pursuing. God is pleased with you and you are on the right path. The more empty and demonic that this world turns, the more it's going to turn you to Christ. Now, a lot of us caught on a little bit sooner, but the rest soon are going to follow suit. Like I said, God is, is pushing you. A lot of people that were on the fence, we're going to have to pick a side. As this world disintegrates more, a lot of you are going to go all in. It's all in the right timing, but it's going to happen. I feel it soon for a lot of you. And eventually all of us will get there. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen.